If you're looking for some new soccer moves, these are nine easy soccer moves you can use to beat more defenders. I'm gonna give you a demonstration on how to perform each skill and then give you an in-depth tutorial on how to improve these soccer moves a little faster. complicated things and you're losing the ball every time it doesn't matter how good your skills are you slow the play down because you take way too many touches it doesn't matter how good your skills are so whenever I do skill videos I want to show you real moves that actually work in games so these are a few that I use some have a bit of flair some are super simple I promise if you stick to them you become confident going right and left you're gonna beat so many more players so let's talk through it I will try to remember all nine. Number one, I just did a body faint. So dribbling out of the defender, I'm just gonna fake with my entire body. I'm gonna do a hard step, 
and I'm going to try to send his body control, send all his weight to this side, and then I'm going to attack the other space. Okay, so I'm dribbling at him, hard cut, push into the other space. If I was going right, I would step left, push right. Okay, so there's a big difference between this and this. Okay, so I need to start selling my fakes, selling my fates. Sometimes you might do a lot of skills, but it doesn't actually trick the defender. In order to really get him to shift his weight so you can create space over here, I need to put a little more emphasis on the movement. I need to step a bit harder, get a bit lower to the ground, throw with my shoulders. I can even throw with my head, with my eyes. And also, being down in this position is creating leverage here. I'm, allowed, I'm allowing myself, I'm helping myself explode, explode into the new space that I've created. Okay, so when you're doing your feints, I want you to think about getting a little lower to the ground and actually trying to sell it with the shoulders, with the upper body movement, with the eyes, be more deceiving with your movements. So in the video I did, in the demonstration, I did a single, but I also did a double. Okay, and I mean, you can go as many as you want, just don't get yourself in the habit of doing too much because you have to be aware of the defender. You might have already beat him. You might have already sold him with one movement. So if I take another one here, now I'm going back into the space that I already created over here, okay? So, look at the defender, if he's shifted, boom, I can go. If he's staying with me, maybe I have to lose him again and I can come over here. So body faint, hard sell, quick explosion. Next is a, I'm calling it a cradled step over because instead of just putting my foot around the ball, instead of doing a normal step over, I'm actually starting the skill with this touch. And I call it a cradle, like I call this a cradle. Because I'm not actually touching it with the inside of my foot. I'm cradling it into that space. So cradle the touch. So I'm gonna cradle, then I'm gonna step over. So I'm basically faking this movement. I'm faking this, and I would explode there. But instead of exploding away, I will go into this space here. So again, with all these skills, I want you to practice right and left. Right, touch with the inside, step over, and again, where is my body positioning when I do the step over? Is it up here, or is it down here? And then I can explode quickly. You have to have the ability to go both ways. Ooh, and the ability to control your body. If I know you're a right-footed player and all you want to do is cut on your right, you're so easy to defend. Unless you have way more pace than me, unless you have way more skill, I want you to start being able to go both ways, right and left. So work on these skills with both feet. Next, I did a, a multiple step over. In the video, I was actually doing like a triple, but double step over. If you get caught up in it, you can go triple. Like you can do as many as you want. Just think about what I said before. There's no point in doing skills if you've already created the space. Once you see the space, boom, explode. All these skills, it doesn't matter so much what you do with the ball. It's what you do with your movement after you create the space. How many times you've played with maybe a teammate or against a guy, he doesn't have the best skills but he beats so many players because he just explodes. He has like one touch and he just sprints with the ball. He creates the space and he sprints with it. Maybe he doesn't even do skills. He just sees the space and he goes. Keep it simple. Create the space, go. Attack the net, go forward with the ball. The fourth skill that I did was a, called a Ronaldo step over. So it's kind of two movements. It's roll, step. So it's like a scissors a scissors to a step over. And I'm starting with this roll here. Step. 
out into space. Okay, if I went the other way, roll here, come on. So start slow, get the movement, and then gonna go. I want you to always look, a lot of times I do this, different skills, but it's the it's the escaping touch afterwards. Okay, so if I come here and now this touch is forward rather than side, I'm a lot more, more likely to get tackled. So I want you to think about that touch when you're trying to escape from someone. It's this touch. I'm getting away, I'm going like a like a triangle, right angle. Rather than he puts his leg out and I just put my escaping touch there. So again, both feet. Ronaldo step over. After that, I went into some simple moves. And I put them in the middle because I know so many players are going to look at these and, and they're not as flashy as the other skills, so they're going to overlook them. But realistically, these are the most effective ones. These are the ones you can count on the most and they're going to help you beat the most amount of players. First was a croquetta. So it's inside, inside. Now, let's really break down the skill because there's much more to it than two touches. Number one, it's the direction of this touch. Just like I talked about with the escaping skip, I don't want to put that touch here because that's easy for him to tackle. I want to put it across my body and even more so, if I can put it backwards into myself, it's going to be much harder for the defender to reach the ball. Okay, so think of the direction of that touch and then also the speed and the force, the pace of that touch. If this touch is slow, it's easy for the defender to get the ball. If it's quick, he can still lunge for it, but he's going to be too slow to get the ball. And also, I'm, I'm really stretching my leg because I don't want to receive it here. I want to receive the ball here, away from the defender. And all these skills, it's being able to do it while running with the ball. So you'll see me and a lot of good dribblers, when they're approaching the defender, it's these, it's these little quick touches. Because if this touch is heavy, now my time is off, my spacing is off. I can't make the move at the right time. Keep that ball close, and then when it's time to go, get away. Keeping it simple and effective. The next skill is just that skip. So remember we talked about the escaping touch. Well that in itself is one of the best moves in the game. Watch Messi do it. Robin used to be so good at it after Bayern in so many years. I mean he's still good at it wherever he's playing in the Netherlands, I forget the team. But dribbling at the defender, when he gets a little close to you, he's gonna make that lunge, skipping there, and then sprinting with the ball. Okay, so dribbling, skip, forward. And you'll notice it's a bit of a jump. I'm not just like here, here, here. I'm actually jumping out of the tackle and moving forward with the ball. Skip, forward, and then with pace, attack. I want you guys to get in the habit of when you're dribbling, if there's space there, just sprint in a straight line towards the goal until someone tries to tackle you. You don't have to beat him and then beat him and then beat him and then beat him. All you have to do is sprint with the ball in a straight line until someone tries to close you down, then you use your skills to escape. But if the space is there, don't hesitate. Don't jog with the ball when you should sprint. So get in that habit of being more direct with your dribbling. You're gonna be way more dangerous. Next skill, keeping on pace with those simple ones. This is another simple one, but extremely effective. I was just calling it a hard cut. So if I wanna get into that space, I'm gonna dribble here and I'm gonna do a hard cut. Now it's the weight of that touch is so important. The direction of it and the weight of it and my body movement, okay? So think about beating players with fewer touches. What's more effective? And exactly, I'm gonna fall on my face and I'm gonna make a fool of myself. If I take too many unnecessary touches, more defenders are gonna close me down. What's more effective, that or this? And now I'm already in the space. So a hard cut, so dribbling there, hard chop, and I want a better cut than that. Okay, so think about 
Parker change of direction. And like I said before, it's what you do after the cut. After I make this cut, am I coming up and then jogging, or am I practicing my acceleration skills, staying low, and getting away? Be direct, the ability to go both ways, accelerate after the movement. I'm not even talking about the technique of the skill, I'm talking about what you do, the mindset of dribbling. Next was a, a spin, I called it. So dribbling at the defender, basically here, I'm gonna turn away from him, and I'm gonna try to make him get close to me. And when he gets tight to me, I wanna spin the opposite direction, okay? Because he, once, once you do this, he thinks he's gonna be able to get tight to you, and he might slow down, he might, his, uh, he might be a little lighter off the feet, or a little heavier on his feet, I should say. And when he does that, he gets tight to you, spin into the space that you created. Okay, so there's two ways to do it. And before, sorry, yeah, before we talk about this, the skill, this one especially, but all these movements, when you're doing that change of direction, you have to get low. Because if I'm trying to spin up here, I have no balance, I have no power, I have no acceleration. So here, here, can it just stay lower to the ground, use your arms, so when he gets tight, I'm actually gonna spin him. I'll put my hands on him, spin, give him a little, a little push in the opposite direction. Obviously not enough to get yourself in trouble as far as a foul, but put your hands on players, learn to protect yourself. So many players just play like this. You have to learn to get your hands up, use your hands, use your upper body as well. So two ways to do it. First was the outside cut. Next was an inside cut. Super low, hands up, protect, the, protect yourself. Once he gets tight, make that spin. Now, if you go to do this movement and you don't feel him coming close or don't see him coming close, then you probably can't spin back into him. Okay, but I could turn on him and use a different skill to get past the defender. Last one that I wanted to show you was, it's a move I use, kind of different than running straight at a player. It's like you're dribbling, you have one on your back, you're trying to lose him, maybe you're on the wing or you're on the side. It's a fake back heel. So I'm basically faking this movement. There's a couple of different ways to do it. Okay, but I'm faking that I'm going to push the ball backwards and then I'm gonna dribble into that space. So it's like we're both running together. I can't quite lose him. So I want to get him to stop running. I want him to be running with me and, and then think that I'm going backwards, get that half stutter step, and then you can create that inch of space to get past him. So a couple ways. One would be, let me do it here for you to see. I could roll back and tap with the inside. I could just roll with the sole. Let me do that better on my left. Roll with the sole like that. I could go super fancy and something like that. Okay, but more so than the touch, it's selling it like we just did with that body feint. So I'm usually actually doing like a head fade like that. And then I would get past the defender. So think about those skills, but like I've talked about so many times throughout this video, it's not so much about the skill, it's what you do after the skill. Let's talk about practicing these skills because watching these videos, it's only gonna get you so much better. You're gonna have to actually put into practice if you wanna see noticeable changes. So what you can do, small space like this, put one cone down, and just practice those nine different skill moves that we talked about. Okay, so you could, you could just go freestyle skills, just go tire yourself out, going back and forth, attacking the cone, or you could break down and go maybe 10 repetitions of each skill, so five times I would go left, five times I would go right, but challenge yourself. The most important thing 
in the beginning, obviously, you have to go slow and you have to master the technique. But if you want to actually be able to transfer these practice skills into match skills, you have to train with pace and intensity and speed. Okay, so don't worry about screwing up because you're going faster, you're challenging yourself. You should be screwing up. If you're not screwing up every once in a while, you're not going fast enough, you're not pushing the pace. We want to get into games and we want to, we want to be able to make a difference. We want to use these skills, we want these skills to be effective. But sometimes if we analyze how we're training, it's way too slow, it's not challenging enough. If your training is easy, the game becomes hard. If your training is hard, the game becomes easy. So think about it and ask yourself, am I pushing myself enough? Am I going fast enough? Am I going long enough, really getting my stamina going? So in a small space, set up a cone, practice these skills. Maybe you just go back and forth until you're tired, until you're really out of breath, and then just walk around, recover, focus on your breathing, shake your legs out, maybe do a few stretches in between. Compose yourself in your mind, positive mental self-talk. Then you come back, back on that bolt, and practice those skills. Challenge yourself. Get some simple, effective skills that you can actually use in games to beat more defenders.